Drum was so full of vim and vigor. When it came to mischief, he was always ready to pull the trigger. He knew how to visualize and create. It was perhaps his very best trait. But watch out, if he had a piece of chalk, he would go into a zone and others would gawk. Chapter 1 Once upon a time, there was a very creative little goop boy named Drom. Drom had the gift of vision. He was able to see things in his head and then create them out of thin air. He never doubted his imagination or his ability to create. When Drom saw something in his mind, he was determined to make it come to life. One night, as he went to bed, he thought about outer space and all of the planets. Then he remembered hearing about Nevershare's adventure into outer space, and he started to see all sorts of different planets in his head. He saw the golden moon, but he also saw a blue marbled Neptune, a sky blue Uranus, an earthy-hued Jupiter, and a smoky red Mars. The planets danced in his head, and he dreamt of them all night long. The next morning, Drahm pulled out every art tool he had, including colored pencils, paintbrushes, chalk, and neon markers. And then he got to work. Drom swished and swooshed and stenciled and painted and drew. By lunchtime, his room had turned into a planetarium, and it was breathtaking. He was so proud of his creation that he sat in the middle of his room and just stared at the walls and ceiling as his mind took him on adventures into unexplored planets. His creativity was the side of Drom that all the other goops fell in love with. They knew he could draw on his imagination and create something out of nothing. His skills were quite impressive. The only drawback to this talent of Drom's was that once he started drawing, Drom tuned out everything and everyone. He didn't hear what anyone said, and the rest of the goops didn't exist for him. One winter day, when the wind was howling, Drom and the famous goop triplets, Stare Off into Spacer, Compita, and Remindo, met up near a grove of redwood trees. They wanted to test out the wind and see if they could ride it through the enormous redwoods that created a majestic and mysterious forest. The plan was to climb up a large redwood stump and jump off it just as a gust of wind blew through and allow it to carry them on a wind roller coaster throughout the redwoods. The triplets were always good fun, and all of the goops knew they could count on Compita to keep them at the top of their game. There was nothing that she liked more than to compete and win. Hey, everyone, I'm over here, shouted Drom as he waved his hands wildly and shouted out to the triplets. Look, there he is, said Compita. The triplets raced over to Drom. Let's get started. This wind will only last for another hour or so, said Remindo who loved to remind everyone of everything he possibly could. Who wants to go first? asked Drom. And before he could even finish his question, Compita raised her hand and jumped up and down. Me! I'm sure I will go on the longest journey, and you can time it, Remindo. I'll track you with my binoculars, said Stare Off into Spacer. So Compita climbed to the top of the redwood stump and waited for a howling gust of wind. 
It was only moments before they heard the wind coming from deep in the redwood grove. It turned and twisted and came racing by. Kampita jumped right into it, screaming in delight. She flew through the air, twisting around the trees until the wind dropped her and disappeared back into the forest. Amazing! That was six seconds you were in the air! Well done, said Remindo, who jotted down the time in his little notebook. Okay, Drum, you're up next, said Staroff into Spacer, as he looked around for Drum, who had disappeared. Where, where is he? asked Staroff into Spacer. I don't know, but look over there. I see blue chalk. That must be Drums, said Kampita. The triplets ran over to the blue chalk on the ground and followed it. Drom had drawn a blue chalk path on the forest floor. He drew it all the way to the foot of the oldest redwood tree. The tree was 1,255 years old and held the mysteries of the entire forest. When Drom arrived at the tree, He drew a keyhole on it in hopes of unlocking the secrets the tree had seen. There he is. He's trying again. We probably don't even exist for him, (laughs) laughed Kampita as the triplets approached the tree. (laughs) Look, I'm going to draw the key that unlocks the secrets of the redwood tree, said Drom. He pulled out his green chalk and drew a key coming out of his blue keyhole. Then... He put his hand on the key, pretending to turn it, and a tiny trap door in the oldest tree in the forest opened and snapped up Drom. Then the door snapped shut, and all the drawings disappeared as if they never existed. The triplets watched in silent awe. Not one of them was able to speak. Chapter 2. Drom was clutching his piece of blue chalk so tightly that it broke in two. The instant it snapped, he was dropped onto a blue bench in the middle of the most colorful neighborhood he had ever seen. Everything was painted in bright primary colors. The buildings were incredible shades of blue, green, red, and yellow. Every wall was a different color. If you took giant Crayola markers and colored a town, that would be where Drom found himself. He popped up from the bench and spun around. This is my dream. Maybe I am dreaming, said Drom. Oh, it's real. Now maybe you can help us out and we'll show you around, said a scrappy little voice. Drom looked around but he couldn't tell where the voice was coming from. Over here, behind the wall, said the voice. Drom saw a large blue wall behind the blue bench. So he stood on top of the bench and tried to peer over, but the wall was too tall. I can't reach, said Drom. You got here with your chalk? Use it and draw your way up, said the voice. Drom looked down at the piece of chalk. He broke it into two, and started drawing on the wall. He drew a blue ladder on a blue wall and started to climb it. To his amazement, it worked. How the chalk ladder worked was a mystery, but Drom just moved up a rung at a time and drew the next one until he was at the top of the wall. Peering over the edge, he was met with a chorus of happy barks and a group of stray dogs staring up at him. You did it, said the scrappy voice. And Drom saw the owner of the voice was a honey-colored furry mutt. I'm Mateo, leader of this pack, and you, my friend, are our savior. Now come on down. How? It's too far. I can't jump, said Drom. Well, 
You still have the power of the chalk, don't you? Why don't you try a rope swing, answered Matteo. Without hesitation, Drom drew a rope swing with a knot on it on the top of the wall, and then he sat on it. The swing immediately swung him to the ground below. Now, we need you to use that chalk to get us out of here, said Matteo, before Pedro, the dog catcher, comes back for us. Matteo then explained to Drom that Pedro went through the colorful neighborhood of La Boca in Buenos Aires, Argentina, once a week to round up stray dogs and haul them off to the pound where their fate was unknown. Every week, the strays of La Boca had to outwit or outrun Pedro. But this week, he had tricked them all and lured them into an empty fenced lot where he trapped them. He used Pollo Asado to lure us here and we couldn't resist, explained Mateo. But now you are here and you can save us. How? asked Drom. Ah, haven't you learned? We've bestowed power in your chalk because we felt your good energy and we took a chance. Now maybe you take a chance on us, huh? asked Mateo. The rest of the strays nodded in agreement and made the biggest pleading puppy dog eyes they possibly could. You, you empowered my chalk? asked Drom in astonishment. See, and now you will return the favor asked Matteo hopefully. See, sí, see, sí, see, sí. this is the best chalk ever, said Drom. What do we need? Well, a door would be an excellent start. We need to get out of here before Pedro comes back to collect us. Okay then, said Drom, as he held his chalk to the wall and began drawing. He drew a beautiful door with the Argentinian flag on it. The entire pack was very impressed and howled to show their excitement. Now let me do the honors, said Drom, as he pushed on the door. It didn't budge. W what happened? He said as he turned to Mateo. Well, the devil is in the details. Draw some hinges and the doorknob. Drom got to work drawing hinges on the edge of the door, and then he drew in a fancy S-shaped doorknob. Shh. Shall I? asked Drom, as he looked at Matteo with excitement. See. Sí. So Drom pushed on the door, and this time it started to move. Slowly, but it moved. With one more hard push, the door burst open, and Drom came face to face with a large, unfriendly looking man carrying a net. It's Pedro! Run for your life! screamed Mateo. The strays scattered in all directions, leaving a stunned Drom face to face with Pedro. Chapter 3 Ay, que pasa? shouted Pedro as he stared at Drom, who couldn't understand a word he said. Then Pedro lifted his net and slammed it down over Drom as Mateo watched from a hidden corner. Pedro scooped up Drom and threw him tangled in the net into the back of his white dog catching van. As he did, Drom dropped his chalk and Mateo watched it roll down the street as the van drove out of sight. Come quick, we need to get that chalk, said Mateo as he ran down the sidewalk and pawed the lone piece of chalk. Another stray named Zoe followed Mateo. I will help you, she said. We owe our lives to that funny little creature. We can't just abandon him. Drom sat up in the van as it zoomed through the streets of Buenos Aires. The ride was bumpy and hot, and there were no windows in the back of the van. Drom desperately tried to untangle himself from the dog net, pulling off one string at a time. Meanwhile, he could hear Pedro angrily barking in the front seat. I will find these strays, and you, my strange little friend, you will be locked up with all of them. 
As Drawn flailed about trying to undo himself, he felt something in his pocket. There, deep down in the bottom corner, he found a small piece of white chalk. Drawn smiled to himself as he held it up. Maybe, just maybe, he had a chance to escape Pedro. The van was still speeding along very quickly, with Mateo and Zoe chasing behind. Drom steadied himself and stood up, grabbing onto a strap hanging from the ceiling. Then he took the chalk and drew a window on the side of the van wall. It was a simple square shape, and it just sat there, looking like a white square drawn on the inside wall of the van. There has to be a way. I know I can do this, said Drom to himself. He drew a little handle beneath the square window and reached out to wind it. Much to his surprise, the window started to open. Drom quickly spun the handle around until the window was completely open. Then he looked out. The colorful streets of Buenos Aires were speeding by. The Rio de la Plata, otherwise known as the River of Silver, shone in the sparkling sun as it cut across the city. Drom held up his hand to block the sun, and in doing so, saw Mateo and Zoe come into view. He waved to them as Pedro's van turned a corner. Did you see him? asked Zoe. I did, I did. We can't lose him, said Mateo, as they sped on in pursuit of the van. Drom looked out again, and saw that he had lost his two friends. He quickly looked around the van and saw a huge pile of brand new dog catching nets in the corner. One by one, he began to throw the nets out the window in order to leave a trail for Mateo and Zoe. Net after net he threw, littering the streets of Buenos Aires. As Zoe and Mateo turned a corner, Zoe gasped. (gasps) Look, look at all the nets. They must be from the van. Follow them. And off they ran. Pedro himself was beginning to feel hot and thirsty and decided to pull over on a side street. He stepped out of his van, wiping his brow. Ay, el calor, he muttered to himself. Then he glanced up and saw a net being shoved out of a window in his van. A window he had never seen before. Ay! He screamed. Que pasa? Then he whipped open the door of the van and caught Drawn in the back of the van, shoving another net out of the window. Pedro's face grew even redder with his rage. He was furious. He threw himself into the back of the van, lunging at Drawn. Drawn quickly ducked out of the way and into a corner. I will get you, said Pedro as he lifted a net into the air. He was significantly taller than Drom and had the advantage of being able to tower above him. Drom inched his way to another corner, trying to make himself invisible as he crouched low. Pedro lifted his net and flung it down with a slam, capturing Drom beneath it. Chapter 4 Drom thrashed around, desperately trying to free himself of the net, but only ended up getting further entangled. Pedro grinned widely and snarled, I have you now. But a moment later, Pedro felt a large net fly over his head and catch his arms up in a knotted mess. Drom stopped flailing for a minute, and stared up to see Mateo and Zoe poking their heads through the chalk-drawn window and staring at him. Come now, quickly, called Zoe. Pedro twisted around, but caught his feet in the net and fell flat on the floor. Drom ran to the window and was pulled through by Zoe and Mateo. They all fell to the sidewalk and hugged. We did it, said Mateo. Really? I don't think so, said Pedro, 
as he stuck his head out the window, followed by Annette. Run, screeched Zoe. Zoe, Mateo, and Drom raced around the corner with Pedro hot on their heels. Facing them was a wonderful large wall of graffiti. It was big and colorful and covered with different animals. Without hesitating, Drom grabbed the blue chalk from Zoe and drew an outline of Zoe, Mateo, and himself and said, hop in. The three of them then hopped into the wall and took their positions in the graffiti. They became part of the wall. Pedro raced around the corner and came to a screeching halt. He looked up and down the street. Donde? He screamed as he searched the street. Es impossible, he blurted out. Zoe, Mateo, and Drom stayed as still as they could. They were watching Pedro as he stood right in front of them, but they were invisible to him. He couldn't see them in the graffiti. Drom had never been so pleased with his skills. He felt a little bit magical. Then he glanced up and saw an elephant who gave him a wink. Pedro walked on and turned the corner. Mateo hopped off the wall and stretched his legs. Ah, I didn't know how long I could hold that, my poor legs, he said as he stared up at Zoe and Drom, still holding their positions in the graffiti. Then, without warning, Pedro returned. Aha, I knew it. I knew you were here. Now where are the other two? he said as he slammed his net over Mateo. Zoe's eyes almost popped out of the wall, but Drom glared at her. You will never find them, snarled Mateo. Well then, you will never be free, snarled back Pedro. Then he scooped up a tired Mateo who could barely move his legs and threw him in the back of his van and took off. Come on called Zoe as she popped off the wall and motioned for Drom to hop on her back. They tore off in pursuit of Pedro and his dog-catching van. Zoe knew all the alleyways and shortcuts, and she whizzed in and out of them ahead of the van. She finally stopped in front of a large brick wall with a graffiti tiger painted on it. Let him down, she said to Drom as she pointed at the tiger. Drom hesitated for a moment as he stared at the tiger, and then he reached up and drew a trap door beneath the tiger's feet. Just then, Pedro's van came tearing around the corner and to a screeching halt as it came face to face with Drom and Zoe. I have you now, snarled Pedro. This time, Drom didn't hesitate. He reached up and pushed the trap door. A crack of light flooded through and Drom watched as he saw Tiger Paw push out. First one and then another and then bam. An enormous tiger was standing on the sidewalk, staring down Pedro. Get him, yelled Drom as he pointed at Pedro. Pedro fled down the street with his net trailing behind him. The tiger had watched Pedro chase dogs around Buenos Aires for years and had never been able to do anything about it. Finally, he had his chance. He tore off down the street after Pedro and they both disappeared into the alleyways of Buenos Aires. Drom drew a window on the outside of Pedro's van and pushed it through. And Mateo hopped out and gave him a big, wet, sloppy kiss. Zoe, Mateo, and Drom looked at each other and laughed and laughed (laughs) until they were interrupted by the roar of a tiger. They looked up the road to see the tiger slowly approaching them with a dog catcher's net hanging from his mouth. I think it's time to make our exit, said Drom, as he reached up to the wall and quickly drew two doors. One for you two and one for me. There's no time to waste. 
I will never forget you, said Drom, as he pointed at the doors. Then Drom opened his door and disappeared into the wall, along with the door. Zoe and Mateo opened their door and disappeared, just before the tiger swatted his paw at them. He caught the edge of the door and went through it, and landed back up on the wall, exactly where he was supposed to be. Drom landed back in Goop World in the Redwood Forest. He looked down at the piece of chalk he was still holding and smiled. Then he quickly looked around for the triplets, Compita, Remindo, and Stare Off into Spacer. But they were nowhere to be found. They were caught in the root bridges of Cherapunji. But that is a tale for another time. Hey there, it's Maria. Thanks for listening to Goop Tales. If you want to listen to another one, all you have to do is click on your screen and you can. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to Goop Tales and you'll always be notified when there's a new one. You can tag us on social media at Goop Tales on either Facebook or Instagram. I'd love to hear your questions and comments. And you can also leave me a voicemail if you go to gooptales.com and use the little prompt in the sidebar. Okay, I will see you in the next Goop Tale.